And our conversation with Dr. Ralph May from the Community Guidance Center is brought to you by Marcus and Mack, a law firm representing injured people. Dr. May, good morning. Morning, Todd. Thanks for having me. Well, it's good to have you on the air with us once more. We've been talking throughout this coronavirus crisis at various stages about some of the uh, psychological, emotional issues that folks might be dealing with. And uh, here we go. We're going to ramp it up into uh, yellow. We're all going to turn yellow on Friday. Uh, right, right. And, uh, and for some, that has a different meaning than it does yeah, yeah, for others. Yeah, uh, it certainly has many levels of meaning, doesn't it? It absolutely does. But uh, let's address it. And, and I'll use as a frame for this our poll question this week. Uh, which is brought to us always by the Indiana Regional Medical Center, and it has to do with dining out. And the question just posted yesterday is, if you, if you regularly dine out under normal circumstances, how comfortable will you be to resume dining out when your favorite restaurants reopen? Right now, the voting shows uh, 29% saying, I can't wait to eat out, 12% saying, I'll be, uh, I'll be comfortable, 24% saying, I'm a little hesitant, and 35% say, no way, not for a while. And that really does underscore the fact that it, it's with mixed feelings right. for some that uh, we get back out onto the street. There are fears that people will have when there are more people out there around them, aren't there? Yeah, there are. And I think we're, we're fighting two forces, right? And we talked about this before when we were looking, as you said, the stages of this. As we start to reengage with one another, get back out, the, the social distancing remains really, really important. But we want to get back to normal, and, and 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 we were talking about this before. I hate that term, new normal. That just annoys me. <laughs> we want it. We want to get back to normal. Mm-hmm. People want to get back to normal. They want new normal. They want to get back to normal. That's no, that is normal to want to get back to normal. Oh. The issue is we're going to have to do this carefully. This virus is sneaky. It's something we still are learning about as we go. So I think the distribution in your survey is actually very reflective. People react to this limitations and being kind of holed up in the house in a couple different ways. One is, I want out. I want to get back to normal. I want to get back to normal as soon as possible. They don't see the real immediate threat here in Indiana County. This is not New York. We, don't, we haven't seen the impact, thank God, of what happened in New York because we were ahead of it. We were socially distancing. We were ready. Now, as we get back, the virus is still there. We still don't have effective vaccine. The treatments are being developed, but not quite there yet. So people have a natural degree of fear. I wouldn't even call it anxiety. I would call it fear that the virus is still active, so we have to be careful. We know what works, social distancing, masking, washing your hands. We know that we can prevent flu. We can prevent coronavirus the same way. But the issue is once people want to get back to normal so badly, they'll start loosening up too much. People want to get back to normal too fast, so they'll start loosening up too much. So I might go out and be practicing social distancing and wear my mask when I need to and wash my hands, but but Joe might be like, the heck with this. I don't think we have corona, so I'm just going to go and do what I want. And Joe can do a lot of damage, without. and I'm not picking on the Joes out there. I'm just using mm-hmm. you know the Joe as an example, that we're going to be a little bit hesitant because we don't know how our neighbors and friends and acquaintances and co-citizens are going to behave when we go out. So because of this really wanting to just get back to normal, which is a normal thing, that can create some increased tension uh, when you're particularly when you're in closed spaces uh, where the virus can travel. So, so I, I think fear, I want to distinguish fear from anxiety. Anxiety is irrational. Anxiety is when you're afraid of something that can't really hurt you. Fear is when you're afraid of something that can hurt you, like I'm afraid to go out and stand in the middle of the road. Good thing. Uh, we need to have a healthy degree of fear, not, not an immobilizing level of fear. We don't want to stay holed up in our houses forever, but we have to have a healthy degree of respect and fear for this virus so that as we get back out and we start doing things, we need to be respectful of one another, not just ourselves. The thing about this virus that, that's very tricky psychologically is we can have it but not know it. And so we think we're not a threat, but we could be to someone who's vulnerable. We could be to someone who's sick, to someone who's got, you know, an existing medical condition. So we have to be very, very respectful of others. We should always be respectful of others, right? Yeah. But, but particularly now, because of the way this virus works, we want to get back to normal. That's great. And we will get back to normal. Mm-hmm. But we want to do it in a respectful way. We want to respect the virus, and we want to respect each other. One of the things that I would, you know, picture myself doing out in a situation like that where 
someone was disregarding some of the social distancing rules and, and engaging in behavior that I would not agree with uh, from my standpoint is rather than confront them about that, I would simply leave the area and right. and let them do what they do. Others will become confrontational in those uh, situations, though, and and that creates another level of anxiety, does it not? It does. And, 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 and in fact, it, we are in a situation right now where there's a tremendous debate nationally about you know, going back, getting back to normal right away, being careful, pulling back. And so there's going to be tension that exists between people. And when we see people not respecting the limits of the virus, it'll make you know, people agitated. Some people will become very agitated. Some people will become agitated if they feel their rights are being infringed upon or they're being told what to do. So the, the best advice I can give from the mental health perspective is we need to be patient with one another. We're all in the same boat here. The enemy is the virus not one another. We're frustrated. We want to get back to normal. We're afraid. We need to be kind and respectful to one another, and we will get through this. I've seen some real positive things that came out of this virus. I see people respecting one another, honoring one another, honoring the first responders, honoring the people who do a lot of the hard labor jobs in this world that have to keep going, even the virus. I see a lot of learning to respect one another, good things happening around us. It's easy to focus on the bad things, but there are a lot of good things are happening around us, too, because of this virus. Where we're learning to connect with one another better. I think we need to pay attention to that and strengthen that bond. So we're going to get back to stage yellow coming up on Friday, and we'll be able to do more things outdoors and uh, maybe go to places that have been closed for a while. Uh, but it is always a good idea to follow whatever rules each of those companies uh, or organizations does have in place. wanted to talk to you about something else this morning because an article came out yesterday uh, saying that uh, the term they used was deaths of desperation right. are escalating. And, and when you hear a phrase like that, deaths of desperation, you automatically think of suicide, but it's uh, a little bit more broad than that, isn't it? It is. It's not just suicide. It's uh, substance abuse increases during these time frames, Interpersonal violence, domestic violence increases during this time frame. Suicide will increase. As, as this goes longer, the overall level of stress on us increases because of the economic pressures, the fears of the virus, the changes we're facing. So, so deaths of desperation can also be, I was reading an article from the National Institute of Health, a lot of the deaths related to COVID aren't COVID. They're people who have pre-existing medical conditions that were afraid to get those conditions worked with during during isolation. So they were afraid to take get their heart disease worked on. They were afraid to get the health care they needed. So so the deaths of death, I'm desperate, but I'm afraid, so I'm afraid to get the health care that I need. Mm-hmm. Uh, when I was over at IRNC to get some tests done, it was amazes me is that I've never seen the hospital empty. Like, we're ready for COVID, but, you know, they've had to be ready, but, but a lot of people haven't gotten their regular treatment and that can lead to negative health, health outcomes as well. So the, the, getting back to normal means getting back to getting the care you need, whether that's physical health care, whether that's mental health care. Now, the guidance center, I can tell you, our number of people calling and coming in for services has gone up during the crisis, and that's good. Mm-hmm. People are calling. We're doing it on the phone so people don't have to, to go out in public so they can maintain their isolation. But, but people are reaching out for help. But that's going to increase as we start going back to quote unquote normal because the impact the impacts of this are cumulative and long term so the longer you go with financial stress the longer you go with isolation and going back there'll be people i can guarantee you i've seen some already people start to have panic about going back to normal because they're afraid yeah. you know they've gotten very habituated to being at home so now they're afraid to go out they're the people like i got to get out of here and they're the people like i don't want to get out of here and those two extremes are not good. So we've got to find the middle ground here. I have uh, said often in the past couple of weeks that sociologists are going to have a field day with 2020. I mean, oh, they're well, just... they're, they're going to be writing books about this long after I'm gone and you're gone, Ty, about 2020 and, and the years after what we learned, good and bad. I mean, this is going to, we've, we're living down in one of the most critical times, I think, in our history, and we don't really understand it yet, but, but we will. I mean, and we'll come through this. I'm absolutely convinced uh, that we'll come through this and, and we'll be stronger for it, but, but getting from here to there is going to be uh, good and bad. So from the standpoint of a pro such as yourself, somebody who has done pretty well, 
through all of this and has uh, managed to cope and find ways to uh, um, deal with the, some of the issues that have come up. Now they're saying to themselves, that's it. I've had enough. I'm, I'm going to take desperate measures. I'm going to go back doing what I normally do and, and the heck with all of this because I, I just can't take it anymore. What are some of the things that they can do to sort of um, turn back the dial a little bit on, on, their, on their increases uh, in tensions? Well, first thing is what you're experiencing is normal. I'm not going to, I would not, you know, get on you for feeling that way, having those emotions, and really wanting to get back to normal. Everybody feels that. The issue is when the frustration gets to the level where you start making decisions that are not healthy for you and for others. My first point to people is the way this virus works, you may feel personally that you're fine, and you really need to get back to work, and you really need to get back to your life, but you could be a carrier. And you can pick up this virus, and you can transmit it to many, many people and not even know it. So my question to you is, do you want to be the source of other people's suffering? It's not just about you. The virus can make people very selfish. Mm -hmm. You know, stress can make people focus inward on themselves, right? Like my family, me, 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 which is understandable. It's survival. But we have to remember we're all in this together. We're a family of humanity. And we have to remember that others depend on us, too. We fight this virus by not transmitting it, even when we don't know that we have it. Yeah. So hold the line. Uh, don't give in to your frustrations. Correct. And, and uh, it will all work out in the end. For those who need the help of the Community Guidance Center, what should they do? Call 724-465-5576, and we will hook you up talk to you on the phone you can you'll be able to, after we go yellow you can come in or you can talk on the phone whichever you're more comfortable with and i also want to point out the crisis number in indiana which is 24 7 is one seven two four three 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 two four seven zero very good very good dr ralph may thanks again for helping us to sort of get a little focus on what's going to be coming next not at all todd always appreciate it have a great day take care take care